Beth's father died while she was pregnant. Theirs was not an easy relationship, and Beth had suffered for it. But in the end, each found the love and peace they needed. I think when he died, she was naturally, she was extremely upset, but there were two other things that distracted her. One, she was working every day, and two, she was carrying a child. She was six months pregnant. Three months after her father's death, Bet gave birth to Sophie Federica Alohilani von Hasselberg. She was born on November 14, 1986. Federica was named for Fred, Bet's late father. Alohilani is the Hawaiian word for bright sky. With her newborn daughter in her arms, Bet turned a new chapter in her life titled Motherhood. As a mother, Bet is, um, she's a bit like a Jewish mother, like the, the, um, like the, the, st the stereotype of what a Jewish mother apparently is, which is uh, extremely doting and um, sort of insistent that Sophie try this, eat this, eat this, constantly wanting her to, to eat. Um, but, but actually what it just boils down to is that she's incredibly in love with Sophie and, and is really um, totally involved in, in raising her. The, the, the most serious patch of domesticity that I had was caused by the birth of my daughter. I mean, it was a frenzy of domesticity. It was baking, uh, sewing, planting, uh, cooking, having dinner parties. I mean, uh, making things, cutting things, saving things, making, you know, my own cards. I mean, it was such... I did this for years. Beth's life was flourishing once again. She had Sophie, a string of movie hits, and now launched All Girl Productions with longtime friend Bonnie Brookheimer. The motto of All Girl Productions is we hold a grudge. And um, we, see, of course, it's tongue in cheek, just like the, t the title of our company, the name of our company. But the motto stems from the fact that Bet and I both have a very good memory as far as people who have been good to us and helped us and people who have been horrible to us. And we remember those people and um, we hold a grudge. <laughs> In addition to the comedies, we also wanted to have uh, a, a broader spectrum. We wanted to have musicals and we wanted to do some, some dramas too. Because I felt that I had a... Um, a point of view, and I thought that it would be, it was a worthwhile point of view. In 1988, Bed and Bonnie produced their first movie, Beaches, a heartwarming buddy movie. That's me next to Bed. Here we go. Welcome. A chez moi. Jeez, it's cold in here. I guess hold. Oh, forgot to send the heat up. Send the heat up! Beaches uh, is... Sure. Very, very dear to us because even all these years later, wherever Bet and I go, women especially will always come up to us and say, Beaches was our favorite movie every year. My best friend and I watch it together. And it's great to know that we put something forth like that that people regard so highly and, and, and with such great enthusiasm. After Beaches, Bet made For the Boys, a World War II musical. It earned her a Golden Globe Award and an Oscar nomination. Unfortunately, it flopped at the box office. Unlike her last failure, Bet learned to handle it better. I've learned that they, uh, that you live through one, you're gonna live through another, sure as hell. Sure as shooting, you know, I mean, duh. It, it's, it's a cycle. You, it's, you, it's a cycle, and you have to be prepared at the end of one cycle that the, other, the next cycle is going to start up again and not be, be so confused when it, when it turns out that way. Bette retreated to the quiet company of her daughter, husband, and friends. Then came the news that Johnny Carson, the man who helped launch her career, was retiring. Carson wanted Bette to be the last guest on his show. It was 1992, exactly 22 years after her first appearance with Carson. Here's Bette Midler. The show was there and all of their spouses were there. That is something that Bette can do like no other, is, is to give people a chance to get their emotions out that maybe they can't say or speak, but music, music on any level can do that. And then when you put Bette Midler together with the right music, you know, I'm hard pressed to think of anyone else who can, who can bring up that kind of emotion. And that was wonderful to see how it affected everyone involved with the show. Bette's performance won her an Emmy and brought her back to the very first time she sang for Johnny. It was so electrifying that she had to do more of it. That's when she decided to return to the stage. 
Bette Midler was going to sing and dance again. Sometimes my brain goes on the CD shuffle. <laughs> you know, when you put a whole bunch of CDs in the machine, you press random, any old thing comes out. In 1993, Bette Midler had been performing for nearly 30 years, on Broadway, in television, and at the movies. But there was one thing she loved best, and she needed to do it again. So she left Hollywood for New York City, and a record-breaking 30 nights at Radio City Music Hall, in a show she called Experience the Divine. She's just the greatest live performer of our lifetime, so, you know, she, she, she lives for the live performing, and she's just the greatest. There is no one greater than her. I mean, I'm still the greatest fan of Bette Midler. I really do enjoy the live shows the most, I have to say. I have, a, I have so much control over them, and uh, they are an expression of what I'm, what I'm interested in. And, in my, and, my, and the presentation is always, not always, but often what I, what I intend, what my, m my mental vision is. And so, it's, to me, it's a, a beautiful package, a perfect package. A perfect package of another sort brought Bette back to her Broadway roots when she was offered Gypsy, the classic musical that became a television milestone. Why do you fill her with such bunk? It ain't bunk. Nothing wonderful is going to happen to her or to June or to you. Maybe not to me, but they're going to have a marvelous time. I'll be damned if I'll let them sift their lives away like I did or like you do, with only that calendar on the wall to tell you one day from the next, or, or that plaque from your rotten railroad company to say, congratulations, for 50 years you did the same dull thing every dull day. Mama Rose, Bette's character in Gypsy, was an overbearing stage mother. Unlike that character, Bette worries that Sophie may follow in her footsteps. She uh, um, has already shown signs that she's interested in... I can't say the word. <laughs> Acting. And uh, she's, she's, she's pretty wonderful, though. She's a very independent uh, spirit, very bright very much her own uh, uh, person. She has a very good ear. She does wonderful accents and she's a good dancer and she's a good student. I'm very proud.